Today we're wrapping up the plasma table project, cleaning up the wiring, and fixing one annoying problem I created along the way. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, today we're gonna to finally wrap up the build on this Langmuir Systems Crossfire Plasma Table. In previous videos, we built the monitor mount here to mount the touchscreen monitor actually on the table itself. And we've done some test cuts and some bending and I've been pretty happy with the results, but now it's time to actually wrap it up and actually finish it. Otherwise, I tend to leave things that are working well enough and, and never actually finish them. So today we're gonna to actually try to finish something. Um, I have gotten a few comments on this. Uh, several people have asked about cable and wire management, and that is an issue on this table. There are a lot of wires and they go everywhere. I've come up with a solution that I'm pretty happy with. We'll take a look at that today, and you can tell me in the comments if it meets your expectations or not. The other comment I've gotten on this is that by mounting the screen on this side, I've effectively reversed the axes from the operator's perspective and that that's gonna be confusing. And yes, indeed, that is really confusing. I thought my brain could handle it and I was wrong. So we're gonna reverse the axes on the table and fix that today. Well, let's get started. For cable management, there have been a number of suggestions that people have made, but the one question that comes up over and over and over again is that I should just route the cables for the monitor and the computer through the square tube here. And you know, that would be possible. This is a test piece when I was uh, trying to practice my welding off camera so I wouldn't embarrass myself completely. And there is room through this to actually route some cables. What's actually going through here is the power cable for the computer, which has a small connector on the end. It would fit through this. A USB cable, and that would fit through this, but also an IEC monitor cable. And so there's a power cable in here and that power cable has ends on it that won't actually fit through this. So I would have to cut the ends off the cable, route them through the tube, and then uh, reconnect them and, and solder or patch the cables together. I didn't really want to do that. But the bigger problem is that this tube comes down and it goes into the leg where there are two cross bolts that go through it. And those cross bolts almost entirely take up the space inside the tube. So it wouldn't be possible to get the cables past that point. I would need to, I could route them through the tube, but then I'd have to cut a hole in the side here and then exit. And in the end, I don't think it really gains a lot of advantages, especially since I'd have to cut the ends off of the power cable. So what I did instead is I decided to use this material. And this is commonly referred to as finger duct or wire duct. And it's just a plastic channel with these fingers on the sides with a lid that then snaps on over the top. And it allows you to route the wires through and then snap the lid on. And these holes on the side give you the opportunity to route wires in and out. So you can bring a wire in through one of those holes. The, uh, the little fingers here are flexible so you can spread them apart and route your wire in and then route it where it needs to go and snap it down. You can also loop a wire back and forth a few times if you need to take up some extra, extra length. And so I just went ahead and stuck one of these here on the side and I've got the wires for the monitor and the computer and the USB routing down through it. And I can just snap this back on and I've got this all across the underside of the table and we'll hop down there in a minute and uh, that's how I'm routing the cables around. Now this stuff can be mounted with screws or it comes with a roll of adhesive and this is just a clear adhesive with uh, a film that you can peel off and this stuff is really tenacious. As long as the surfaces are clean, this holds really well and it's soft and it stays soft in cold temperature so I have high expectations for it. Um, I got this kit on Amazon. I will go ahead and just throw a link down in the description uh, for what I used here. But this stuff is available everywhere. It's available in lots of different sizes. Every industrial house is gonna have this as well because it's commonly used in wiring industrial uh, electrical panels. You might be surprised how hard it is to get cameras and lights down underneath a table like this so that you can see a black cable duct installed on a black tube with a black plug strip, but here it is. You can see I've got this cable duct uh, routed along the underside of the table. Pretty much 
everywhere uh, cables need to go. So I've got a strip along here, I've got a strip along here on the back, I've got a strip that goes across the table here, and I've got a plug strip mounted to the side of the tube up here so the cables for power for the computer and the monitor can come through. So they just come through this, they just exit through the holes between the fingers on the side and just plug into the table, plug into the uh, plug strip right there. Then for the control box on the side, all the cables come out of the back of this and I've pretty much just got those going parallel around the side and into a piece of finger duct that's vertically here on the side. So then they can go up, join the other ducts and go wherever they need to go on the table. From the plasma cutter, I've got the torch firing cable and the feedback for the arc voltage and those just go up, go into the finger duct and just get routed around on the table. The one thing that is difficult to route is the wire here for the motor on the moving axis. And it just kind of flops around here and there's not a lot I can do about it. I investigated maybe getting a piece of a plastic drag chain to try to enclose this. And in the end, decided it wasn't worth it. But I did decide I did want to do one thing with this. Up here, the top end of this wire just goes right into the motor. And in fact, the sheath doesn't actually go into the motor. It ends and just the individual conductors go through a grommet into the motor. There's no strain relief up here. This thing kind of flaps around out here and it has to because this motor has to be able to move back and forth. And so uh, there's really no strain relief and that did not make me happy. So I went ahead and designed something. This is a 3D printed part. This is made out of the same carbon fiber PETG that I've used in previous videos to make the monitor mount over on the other side. And I'm gonna mount it to the back here and take advantage of the fact that there are four M3 threaded holes here. Now those are for screws that come through the motor from the other end to hold it together, but there's about five millimeters or six millimeters depth of M3 threads and I can utilize that. So I just uh, sketched up a simple part in Fusion 360. I'm not gonna go into the details on the design of this, but I will, um, I will put a model up on Thingiverse if you wanna download it and uh, use it on your plasma table. But it's just a plate that attaches over the back of the motor, and then it has a little angled piece here on the bottom with a slot through it for a zip tie. So I can screw this to the back of the motor and zip tie the cable and anchor it securely. So these are just four M3 screws. Get them all started here. And then I can just put a zip tie through here, wrap it around the cable. Tighten that up. This is a little uh, cable tie gun. If you don't have one of these and you use a lot of zip ties, these will uh, pull the zip tie tight and trim it off flush. Highly recommended. I'll put a link down to this in the video description if I can find it. I bought it many years ago. But now that cable is anchored securely. We have strain relief, so it's not going to break those wires off over time, and it also angles the cable out. So, does this, so as this goes back and forth, it's likely to fall outside the corner of this box and not get caught on it. So that solves that problem. Let's take a look at where the plasma torch lead comes up on top. Now up here on the top of the table, I've gotten a bunch of comments about this torch lead. Because this isn't a machine torch, the cable doesn't exit the top, it exits the side. And a lot of people were really concerned about this cable flopping down and hitting the work or getting burned or something. I don't really think that's a problem, but I also don't like the way it flaps around. And when this is all the way over at the other end, it comes fairly close to the monitor mount. And so I'd like to have a little bit more control of this. And so what I've decided to do is I want to take the torch lead and I want to anchor it to the top of the motor here. We've got the same situation on this motor that we have on the motor over here on the side where we put the uh, strain relief plate. We've got four M3 screw holes. So I went ahead and designed and 3D printed a bracket to hold the torch lead. Now this part is a lot more complex than what I did down on the side. We've got the plate that attaches to the motor and we've got a nice curved channel in this bracket that will hold the torch cable. So this is 
designed to fit the cable precisely. We've got some grooves or some channels cut through it for zip ties to hold it on. We've got some channels up the sides to hold these wires. And I will be doing a separate video on the design of this part because it actually is pretty interesting. And there are a bunch of tools that I used in Fusion that a lot of people probably aren't familiar with and uh, could learn something from. So I am gonna go ahead and do a separate video with the design of this. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. So I've got four M3 eight millimeter screws to attach this to the top here. And I'll get all the screws started first. And then I've got a bunch of just ordinary eight inch zip ties and these will fit through the channels in the 3D printed part. This is something that's great about 3D printing. There's no way you can make a curved channel like that through a part with any other machining operation, at least with any of the tooling that I have. So being able to 3D print with these voids in the part is pretty cool. And we'll figure out about how much slack I think I need for the torch to be able to go up and down. Go ahead and just get these. In place here. And that's the torch lead. And we'll do the same thing with the wires here. And that's that, and then we'll bundle this together and uh, try to get the length adjusted so we have freedom of movement across the table. But that is nice and neat. And now that torch lead is not going anywhere. Okay, I've got all the cables tied up the way I want and now we need to address the axes. And this is something that a couple people pointed out in the comments and I actually thought it was gonna be fine. I thought my brain was gonna be able to handle this just fine, but in practice, I've actually crashed into the end of an axis on the table a couple of times because of this. So let me show you what's going on. Um, I have my controls over here to move it. And because the table is oriented in this position from the operator's perspective, X left and right this direction is not the same as the table X. This is the X axis on the table. So X is back and forth this way. But when I look at the monitor, X is back and forth this way. So when I press the left X arrow, minus X to go, to what I perceive as the left, it moves away from me. And when I press to go to the right, it comes towards me. When I press a plus Y, which in this orientation of the monitor should move away, it actually moves to the right instead of to the left. And when I press down, negative Y, it moves to my left. This isn't a problem. The table will work just fine, but as an operator, it's very confusing. And more than once, I've come in here and said, oh, I had, the, had it over here, and I thought, oh, I wanna move it a little bit to the right, and I press the button, and crash into the end, of the end of the axis. So that's no good, we need to swap the X and Y axes. So let's try the most obvious simple thing first, and just swap the connectors. Now I'm just gonna switch off the power to the motors, and I'm just gonna pull out the X and Y motor connectors, and swap them. Now this isn't super ideal because I've slightly shortened this cable that has to reach to both ends of the, of the axis here. I don't know that that's gonna be a problem, but let's power it up and see if it solves the issue. Okay, so I'll press plus Y to move away from me, and that works. Minus Y to move towards me, works. Minus X to move to the left, and it goes to the right. Plus X to go to the right, 
and it goes to the left. So not only have we, do we still have one axis now, we have the correct axes activated, but we have uh, one of them reversed. And not only is that a problem from the operator's perspective, but that's also going to cause the, uh, the parts to be cut out in the mirror image of what we actually want. So we need to swap the direction of the x-axis. Fortunately, these are stepper motors, so all we have to do is swap two wires on any of the phases and it'll reverse direction. So to get the drivers, they're inside the box. So let me power this off and let's take out all the screws. Now, if you've never been inside one of these boxes, uh, it's pretty simple. This is the controller up here with the uh, microprocessor and the USB connection back to the computer. And then it comes out to our three drivers. This is the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z axis. And the one that needs to be reversed is now wired up as the X axis. We can just follow those wires and those wires come right up here to this driver. And there's the four wires. And so all we have to do to reverse the direction of the motor is just swap any two, the blue or yellow or the red and green. Either one, we just swap those and it will reverse the direction of the motor travel. So I've got the main power supply here turned off at the switch. There's still lights blinking here because of the USB connection to the computer. So I will just, un I will loosen the screws for the red and green and I will swap them. Now instead of uh, red, green, we have green, red, yellow, blue. And uh, that should reverse the direction of the motor. Now if you actually reverse both pairs, then the motor will go the same direction again. So let me power it back up and let's go over to the other side and give it a test. Okay, it is now the moment of truth. I'm going to press plus X to move to what should be my right. And it does, minus X moves to the left, plus Y should move away from me, and it does. Minus Y should move towards me, and it does. So we've solved the problem from the operator's perspective. Now, what does this mean for CNC cutting on the table? Well, the axes are reversed. So the lower left corner of the workspace is now this corner down here, instead of what it was, that corner over there. So now our total X travel is 30, three inches and our Y travel is 24, 25, rather than the way it was before where the X was narrower at 24 inches and the Y was 30. We've just reversed that. And so I just need to keep that in mind when I'm setting up programs. And if I'm gonna start from the lower left corner of the material, that's just down here. But since I'm standing on this side and operating the table from this side, that should be perfectly natural. So mark this day down on your calendar. I actually finished something, or at least I will have finished it by the time I go over there and put the cover back on the box. And I think this tool is ready to run. I'll wheel it over in the corner and we'll wheel it out for future projects. I am gonna do a video next week talking through how I modeled this bracket for the torch cable. So look forward to that. And after that, we'll find something else in the shop to break or fix or build or destroy. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.